In this video, I am going to solve your retinoid problems in five easy steps. I'm Dr. Marin Locke and I'm a board certified dermatologist and I teach you how to simplify the entire skincare process so that you can get real results without spending a fortune. Now for me personally, as an expert in all things skin, if I could pick just one, only one ingredient that I really think is better than all the others, really my holy grail for anti-aging and clear glowing skin, it's a retinoid. A retinoid is a multitasking ingredient that builds new collagen in the skin. It thickens the skin, peels away dead skin cells, fights acne, unclogs pores, fades dark spots, all of that, it does all of that. So why aren't you using it? Why is everybody not using it? As a dermatologist, I hear patients tell me all the time, and I quote, Dr. Locke, I can't use a retinoid on my skin because it's way too irritating. But most of the time, they are absolutely wrong. You can tolerate a retinoid, you're just not using it correctly, or you're not using the right retinoid for your unique skin type. But those days are long gone for you once you follow these five easy steps. Now, when you finish this video, you will know exactly what to do to get started and get results. This is your educational roadmap to better and more youthful skin through a retinoid. So let's do it. But first, make sure you are subscribed to my channel so you guys don't miss any of my upcoming videos where I break skincare down and make it super approachable for you. I focus on budget-friendly tips and products that will transform your skin on a budget. Follow me on Instagram at The Budget Dermatologist for even more tips and other fun stuff. These are all of my own opinions from personal use and products that my patients have used and had great results with. None of it is sponsored. Now let's talk retinoids. Here are your five steps for successfully using a retinoid in your skincare routine. Step number one, you need to answer one simple question. Is a retinoid right for you? There are some groups of people who should absolutely not be using a retinoid. You should not be on a retinoid if you are trying to conceive, if you are pregnant or breastfeeding. It is not recommended for those populations. Beyond that, some conditions like active eczema should not be on a retinoid. I strongly recommend that you do get clearance from your medical doctor or provider before starting retinoids, even over-the-counter forms, to make sure it is right for you. So that's it, that's the entire step one. It's a yes or no question, is a retinoid right for you? Step two, pick your retinoid product. This is the step where most people get so overwhelmed with all of the options and terminology and price points and just not knowing which to pick. But let me make it super easy for you to understand and conquer this step. So the best way to understand this is by following my simple diagram. Trust me, this is easy. A retinoid is a catch-all term for the topical vitamin A skincare ingredient. There are two main categories of retinoids. You have prescription retinoids and over-the-counter retinoids. Examples or terms that you will hear refer to prescription retinoids are things like retinoic acid, tretinoin, Retin-A, Tazeratine, and Tazerac. Over-the-counter retinoids you will see referred to as retinol, retinaldehyde, and retinyl esters like retinyl palmitate and adapalene or differin. Now, adapalene or differin is an over-the-counter retinoid that is actually a drug and it is FDA regulated. It, it is not just a cosmetic like the others. The main difference between these two categories is that prescription products are generally in the retinoic acid form, which means they do not have to undergo any major conversions to work on your cells to do its job. Now, compare this to the over-the-counter forms, which need to undergo one or more chemical changes to turn into a retinoic acid and then do its job on the skin cells, except for adapalene or differin, which works on a slightly different pathway and doesn't need to be converted like the others. So for example, retinol gets converted to retinaldehyde, which is then converted to retinoic acid. So these all end up as retinoic acid and affect the same type of change, but the over-the-counter products need to do a little extra work to get to the usable form. So what does that all mean? My interpretation of this chemistry is that the prescriptions will be stronger and the over-the-counter forms will be weaker. It is important to understand that weaker does not mean ineffective. Weaker can actually be a good thing for retinoids. The stronger prescription forms are more likely to cause a retinoid dermatitis 
or irritation on the skin, which makes people quit using them. Now, over-the-counter forms are less likely to do this, so the over-the-counter forms are easier to tolerate and still work. Now, one can even make the argument that the weaker forms of retinoids work better than prescription because you can use them more often and long-term because they are less irritating and more tolerable. What good does a strong retinoid do if you cannot use it enough to get results? So keep in mind, successful use of retinoids is a balance between strength of product and consistency of use. Okay, so now you understand how all of these retinoids relate to each other. Next, you will find that within each of these categories, the specific type of retinoid will often come in different percentages or strengths. Some over-the-counter products will have a specific concentration listed, while others will not. An example of over-the-counter retinol products that do not have the strength listed are some of the products by Rock. Neutrogena and CeraVe, and others such as the Ordinary, Paula's Choice, one of the L'Oreal Retinol serums, as well as a few other pricier options like Skin Medica and SkinCeuticals will have the specific percent listed on some of their products. But keep in mind, the higher the percent, the more likely it is to cause irritation resist the temptation to try to get immediate or fast results by going with the highest strength you can find. This almost never ends well, and I see this mistake all of the time. And last, the formulation or vehicle that the active ingredient is mixed in. So you will see retinoid lotions, creams, gels, serums, and even oils. So just depending on your skin type, whether it's dry or oily, normal, sensitive skin, etc., you can choose a formulation that will feel the best on your skin and work for you. So that is a quick and easy flowchart for understanding how retinoids are categorized and how they compare. Here is how I navigate this information to choose my own retinoid products and how I advise patients. You only have access to the prescription category if you are under the care of a licensed medical provider because you will need a prescription to get these from the pharmacy. Otherwise, stick to the over-the-counter options and feel confident in this decision because the over-the-counter products can provide amazing results. I am going to focus on this over-the-counter category now. Within this category, I typically stick to either retinol, retinaldehyde, or adapalene or Differin brand. I do not generally go for the retinol esters like retinol palmitate options because I think the effectiveness is likely too low based on the studies that I've seen. There is much better evidence of efficacy with retinol and retinaldehyde and definitely with adapalene. All of these over-the-counter categories that I just recommended, I am now going to tell you my favorite options from each of these. First, my favorite retinol options. If you are new to retinoids or have sensitive skin, this is the category I like to recommend starting with. Choose a product that has retinol in a moisturizing lotion or cream base like Neutrogena Rapid Wrinkle Repair or the Olay Regenerist Retinol 24. These are going to be among the more gentle and easier to tolerate options, but still effective and you will notice results and they are super affordable. Here are my two favorites in that category. Neutrogena Rapid Wrinkle Repair. I use this on my neck and back of the hands. The neck and the back of the hands are two often neglected areas for skincare and they always give away a person's true age. I suggest using an anti-aging product in these locations to maintain a youthful appearance. So this is one that I really love for that. I also use this on nights where I just want a simple routine and just want to apply one single product after I cleanse my skin. This is a combination treatment product and moisturizer, so this will be plenty for my skin to deliver the retinol and provide moisture. Another option is by Olay, and I'm super excited about this product since it launched more recently. There are two options, a Retinol 24 and a Retinol 24 Max, which has 20% more retinol complex in it. So depending on your skin type, you can choose one of those. And what I love about this product is it is in a moisturizing base as well. So again, you can use this product alone at night to serve as your retinol treatment and your moisturizer. So it's really great for simple skincare routines. It has a retinol complex in it of two types of retinoids. It has niacinamide and a peptide blend, and it's fragrance-free. 
My general advice for picking a retinoid is to look for one that is fragrance-free to further reduce your chance of irritation on the skin since retinoids can, in and of themselves, be very irritating. Of the retinaldehyde category, these are a bit harder to find. There's not as many options out there. I like the Avene brand. This is available at the drugstore and of course on Amazon and online. This brand is a bit pricier as there are not nearly as many options for retinaldehyde creams as there are retinol creams. Now what I love about this brand is that it does have retinaldehyde, which like I mentioned, is the closest thing to retinoic acid only having to be converted one time. It is still gentle enough that you will be far less likely to get irritation from this like you might with prescription options. Another thing I love about Avene is they are transparent about their retinaldehyde concentrations in their products. This is so helpful for you, the consumer, because you can choose a strength that is right for your skin. Avene has several options for you of varying strengths so that you can start low and graduate to higher strengths as tolerated. I like to start with the Avene 0.05 retinaldehyde cream and work up to the 0.1% cream if needed. These have peptides in them as well as vitamin E. I have used the Avene brand on and off for several years and have only good things to say about it. But if this is out of your price range, definitely stick with a retinol cream and you will be just fine. If you guys have any other retinaldehyde creams that you've tried and like and are more affordable, let me know and I'll check those out too. And last, my number one recommendation for over-the-counter anti-aging retinoids is Differin or Adapalene. Adapalene is the retinoid medication ingredient and Differin is the brand. Now, several other brands also make this product such as La Roche-Posay, and this is the only prescription strength product that is available over the counter. This is actually an FDA regulated drug. The others I mentioned so far are cosmetics. Now you will see these marketed on the packaging as acne treatments, and that is true. It is great for acne, but these also treat aging and fine lines, wrinkles, and they help dark spots. It's just not FDA approved for that. So I like to recommend this product for both my acne and my anti-aging patients. Now this will be potentially more irritating for some skin types. So if you have never used any type of retinoid, definitely start slow with this. So that's it for step two. Now you should have a good understanding of how to pick a retinoid product and which one you might want to start with. All of these products I'm talking about are linked below for you to check out for yourself and they are in my Amazon storefront listed among some of my other favorite skincare products. Step three, place the retinoid properly in your skincare routine. So now you have your retinoid, but how do you use it in your routine? This is so important because if you are using it at the wrong time or with the wrong products, you will not get results or you will get a retinoid dermatitis and ultimately stop using it and end up in my office saying, I can't tolerate retinoids. And like I said before, that is not true most of the time. So follow these simple rules when designing your routine with retinoids. Use your retinoid at night. Retinoids are an unstable ingredient and they can easily break down in the sunlight unless they are well stabilized in the product. Even the prescription products like Tretinoin or Retin-A, these will break down in the sunlight. So use this at night and you will get the full benefit of the product and not have to worry about this. Use the retinoid after a gentle cleanser, not a medicated or a treatment cleanser. So pair this with something like CeraVe Creamy Cleanser or Vanacream Gentle Facial Cleanser. Those are two of my favorites. I linked those below. Do not pair this with an exfoliating cleanser or an acne cleanser, and definitely do not pair this with a face scrub. This will severely increase your chances of getting irritation from your retinoid. Apply to dry skin, not damp skin. So after you cleanse, wait about 10 minutes or so, then apply your retinoid. This important detail can really cut down on the irritation of the product. Damp skin absorbs absorbs more product and much more deeply, and you do not want that with a retinoid. So wait for the skin to dry. Do not pair your retinoid with topical acids like AHAs and BHAs. Do not pair it with benzoyl peroxide because this can inactivate it. Do not pair it with vitamin C. In general, that can increase the irritation. I love vitamin C products, 
but I say to use the vitamin C in the morning and use the retinoid at night, so you want to separate these products by the time of day. Keep your nighttime routine simple. This should be your only treatment product, maximum, three products in your nighttime routine, cleanser, retinoid, and your moisturizer in that order, or you can get a combination retinol and moisturizer so you will have an even easier routine. Cleanser, retinoid cream, done. Avoid adding in multiple products at one time. Start only with the retinoid. So for example, don't start a new exfoliating cleanser in the morning and a retinoid at night. Just do one at a time, wait a few days to a week or so, and make sure you are tolerating it well before you add in new products. If you are doing masks and peels, facials, or other procedures, do not use a retinoid at those times. And lastly, follow this up with a sunscreen in the morning. You must have a sunscreen in your routine if you are using a retinoid because this will increase your chance of getting irritation or a sunburn. And you don't want to undo all the positive benefits that you just built overnight with your retinoid because you are then exposing your skin to UV rays unprotected the very next morning. So here is a hack if you are having a hard time tolerating the retinoid. Switch the order of your products. So cleanser first, then moisturizer to damp skin, wait for it to dry, and then put your retinoid on top of the moisturizer. You will still get penetration of the product, but it can be less irritating this way for more sensitive skin types. Step four, this is the initiation phase. Start slowly, resist the temptation to use it too often or to use too much product. I see these mistakes all the time. So first of all, how often do you use it when you first start therapy? One time, that's it. One time and then do nothing and just wait and see what happens for a few days. So your initiation phase might look something like this. Day one, apply it one time. Then you enter a waiting period for a minimum of three days up to seven days, depending on your skin type and your comfort level. If you have really sensitive skin or rosacea prone skin, or if you have tried and failed retinoids in the past, then wait the full seven days. If you have more acne prone skin, oily skin, or maybe just normal skin type or combination skin, you may be safe and in the clear after just three days. But during this three to seven days, you will be looking for signs of redness, flaking, irritation, itching, pain, stinging, burning. If none of that after three to seven days, then continue and apply it again and wait three to five days. If again you are doing well, continue your initiation phase applying your product about two times per week for the first one to two months as you get comfortable with that, increase to three times per week. And once you are tolerating it three times a week, you are doing awesome. During this initiation phase, when you are learning how to use your retinoid, make sure you are using the appropriate amount of it. So don't make the mistake of using too much. A pea-sized amount of adapalene, for example, will treat the whole face, believe it or not. If you are using a moisturizing combination product, you will use the usual amount of that to cover and moisturize the entire face. But if it's just the treatment product alone, like the Differin or the Adapalene, all you need is a pea-sized amount. If you are using more than that, you increase your chance of getting a retinoid dermatitis. Step five is your maintenance phase. This is your long-term roadmap for retinoid use. Retinoids are safe to use long-term and you can continue to derive benefits from the retinoids as long as you are using them. You don't necessarily have to use them nightly, but using them at least three to four times per week is good. Try to even shoot for using it about five times per week if you can. The other few nights you can take a break or use a different treatment product depending on what specific concerns you are targeting. So to review, step four is initiating it slowly and gradually, and step five is maintaining consistency over the long term. During this long-term maintenance phase, you can graduate yourself to a higher strength if you want, knowing that you will still be getting benefits if you just stay at the lower strength and also you will be increasing your risk of irritation as you increase the strength of the product. That's it, you guys. If you follow these five easy steps, you will greatly, greatly, greatly improve your chance of success with retinoids. 
And if you are successful with retinoids, you will notice the greatest improvement in your skin quality and vibrance. All products are linked below, including the sunscreens that I recommend, and all of these products can be found in my Amazon storefront, which I linked below as well. In this storefront, I have all of my favorites listed in categories to make it easy for you guys to navigate and build your own routines. Everything I recommend is tried and true. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and make sure you guys are subscribed so you don't miss any of my upcoming content where I help you simplify and succeed in your skincare journey. See you soon.